Let's get to some breaking news now. We're learning in the last couple of minutes that the FBI is teaming up with local police to investigate whether robberies of a bunch of high-profile athletes, including Chiefs stars Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, were maybe related to international organized crime rings. I want to get to Tom Winter, who's following this for us. Well, like, what? Well, what do we know? <laughs> sure, Hallie. Well, let me translate law enforcement speak from transnational organized crime rings to something that might make a little bit more sense for all of us, which is basically a robbery crew or a robbery gang that has its tentacles or ties back to a South American country. And we've seen this activity throughout the United States, uh, sometimes uh, exclusively involving members of the migrant community, sometimes not involving any members of the migrant community or a bit of a mix. Uh, but basically, these are groups that have uh, have long-standing ties to various South American countries, Trend de Aragua, which is a Venezuelan gang that's operating in New York City, for instance, according to the NYPD, is a gang that's operating here. But these groups uh, work in, uh, in concert with each other, uh, tend to have a lot more training, if you will. Uh, that's not a great word to, to use to describe it, but basically have a lot more know-how uh, than a local uh, robbery crew might have. And so right now what the FBI is doing is they're, they're teaming up with the various local police departments that have been looking at these high-profile robberies of these sports stars and looking at the evidence and saying, do we have a pattern here? Do we have a, uh, a kind of a standard MO that they're using? Are there certain uh, clues that we're picking up at the scene that lead us to believe uh, that this has some sort of an organization? And perhaps they're looking where the, where the items are being fenced. Basically, okay, they've stolen things. Where are they then appearing? That can mm. also be helpful to them. So those are all the types of ingredients, if you will, uh, that they're looking at and they're just trying to see whether or not and it, it, I want to use that phrase very specifically because I haven't made any determinations yet that this is in fact a transnational organized crime ring or that it has ties to South America but it's definitely something they're looking into and it's something that you know obviously given the nature of these athletes we all know who they are I can just say Mahomes and Kelsey and everybody watching knows who we're talking about uh, that that's something that obviously has people's attention and certainly if they're willing to uh, burglarize these athletes homes which presumably have very good security systems, what other robberies could they potentially get away with? So uh, that's another concern. It's not just because they're sports stars. Tom Winter, thank you very much for that development. Appreciate it. Also tonight, a woman who murdered her two children decades ago will not walk out of prison today after a South Carolina parole board denied her release. If you're old enough, you may remember Susan Smith. Her case gripped the country. It was literally all over court TV right when that 24-hour news cycle was starting to become a thing. She claimed a black man carjacked her while her two boys were inside, but that was not true. That wasn't the case. Prosecutors say she rolled her car into a lake, drowning her three-year-old Michael and her 14-month-old Alex. You see the now 53-year-old Smith there insisting she has changed. But the board didn't buy it. It only took him about 90 seconds or so to deny her request after hearing from her now ex-husband, David. He's actually wearing a picture of his two sons. You see it on his lapel. I miss them very much, and I love them very much. And I will be here every two years going forward to ensure that your death doesn't go in vain. Just a really emotional scene. Kathy Park is in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, help us understand what else happened today, because obviously he, he had a, a lot coming up for him. Susan Smith was also trying to get herself mm -hmm. released, obviously unsuccessfully. Hallie, good evening. That's absolutely right. So Susan Smith, when she gave her remarks, she actually had a tough time getting out her words because she was so emotional. So we saw a lot of tears. She says that she is remorseful. She's no longer the same person that she was 30 years ago. She says she has made steps to improve herself while in prison over the last three decades. Um, meanwhile, we do want to play some sound um, from earlier today when we did get a chance to hear from her. Take a listen. I would give anything if I could go back and change it. And I love Michael and Alice with all my Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.